Let's get myself together here. Hmm. All right, all right. LDW MMAC. This is your boy, the coach. You're live, live, live on the coaching show, the coaching show live. And salute to the WMMA universe. Man, man, man. I got this. This lady needs no no introduction. The number 10 ranked UFC bantamweight in the world. Double E's and Bruiser. Okay. Also, uh, man, she's set to uh, take on Macy Chasson this February 6th. I got Marion Reno has blessed us with her presence, y'all. Bruiser, how you doing, young lady? I'm doing great on this beautiful day out here. Man, it is a beautiful day. In California, it is. It is, you know. Yeah. So what is it, like 70 degrees out there now? 80? Uh, it dropped down about 10 degrees, so it's about 66 degrees outside right now. Really bad. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. It's really nice. It's a... Uh, it's when it, it's it's whether you go outside and you enjoy the day. So y'all can walk outside in a pair of shorts, then, can't you? All the time. Okay. Sandals. Okay. All the time. All right, sandals and in, in, in a pair in a pair of shorts. Okay. And uh, body snatcher fitness uh, MMA. He said, Coach and Marion, let's go. Uh oh. Uh oh. He said, let's uh -oh. go. I have to send a shout out to the body snatcher. I am. Um, I chat with him every once in a while. He's actually a fighter, a boxer. And they call him the body snatcher because he's known for his liver shots. He has had a fight coming up. So I am wishing the body snatcher the best of skills. Go do work. Okay. All right. Body snatcher. You heard that now. Come on. You got the blessing of the Belizean bruiser. So you need to go in there and win now. If you don't, I can't speak to you again. Oh, wow. <laughs> it has been a long time. So, Martin, let me ask you, how are things at Trivecta going? Trivecta, we are very blessed. And I cannot say that enough. We have a really good environment. We have great coaches. We have great members. Um, it's more of a family environment. And everybody just really quality, good quality training. It's it's an amazing atmosphere. Okay. Trivecta, guys. It's, it's Trivecta. And y'all can see the logo up on the screen. They jujitsu. And wrestling, okay, and you guys are you known for that because you and your husband Mondo, you are Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belts. Mm -hmm. I bet you people didn't even know that, did they? <laughs> Probably not. He got his about a year ago, and he just got his professor bars on his black belt. So I'm pretty proud of him. Mm. Um, I'm pretty proud of where we both started and where we we pretty much finished off. So you know, both black belts, we take pride in that. You're a professor too. Yes, yes. I have been instructing. Honestly, I've been teaching classes since I was a blue belt before it was okay to do that. But I had a women's class when I was a blue belt and I have taught at every belt. So, yeah. Wow. Man, look, we got a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Okay. So I'm going to ask the question, the famous question that I asked. I've asked so many fighters and none of these fighters could give me any solid advice. Let me see if you can break the chain. Let's see. Okay, so I was put into a Kimura. Very painful. I hadn't told you this story. Very painful. You know, this jujitsu master, you know, he weighed about 130 pounds, you know. I weigh about 180. So I'm like, you know what? I said, man, you can't, you know, you can't do anything to me, you know. And, you know, older guy, he was laughing, you know. So I said, you can't do nothing to me. I said, I got you. That was your first mistake, coach. <laughs> I know. I underestimated him. So, you know, I, I wrestled, you know, I wrestled back, you know, so I was a pretty good wrestler. So I took him down. I said, ah, you can't do that. Next thing I know, I was in a Kimura. <sighs> Painful experience, especially if your joint's not flexible. How do you get out of that? that that's, that's my only, how do you get out of that? I'll give you two scenarios. First, uh -oh. Uh -oh. don't get in it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a... Hold on, second. Hold on. I, I got one after the second one. Second one, tap. Third one, grab a hold of your shirt or something and roll. <laughs> but you can't just stay there. You can't just stay there and let him adjust, adjust, adjust. So you're going to grab, depending on where you're at. So if you're on the bottom and he goes for a more and he's on top of you, you're going to grab and roll and try to get your elbow to the ground or your hand to the ground, just a different position. You know, you are the sixth fighter to tell me don't get in in the first place. And, and, and you know, that's, a, that's an ongoing joke, though, in jujitsu. Um, when, when you ask a professor and they just want to be, 
I guess facetious. They're just like, don't get in it. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> it was the most uncomfortable thing because this guy, he was laughing at me. And it's like, you know, and the older guy too. So, you know, it's like, ha, 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 see, ha, 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 ha. you can't get out, can you? I said, no, nah, I can't get out. So Did I've, you try to grab a hold of something? Did you try to grab your, under your leg? You know, if you were in his guard, you would grab under your leg. Did you try to grab a hold of your shirt? Did you try to grab your hands together? Or you just let them come I, over you? I let them because I felt like if I, tried, if I tried to move or try to squirm or something, I thought I would do damage to my arm. So I said, dang. I said, this little joker, he got me. I said, he really, he really got me. You know, and I'm like, okay, all right, okay, I, I get it now. You know, I, I learned a lesson that day. I learned a valuable lesson. Well, tell me what position did he get it from? Were you in his guard? Was he on top? He was on top of me. He was on top because when I, I was trying to wrestle with him, and I was kind of wondering, you know, why was he just letting me control him like that, you know? Um, and so here I am thinking jujitsu and wrestling are so similar, but nah, because, you know, when he put me in it, you know, I don't know. It's like, I felt like my, I felt like my arm, my shoulder, and my elbow were just about to just, I felt like they were about to go. I said, oh man. So I just said, okay, all right, I'm done. I'm sorry. Well, here- with them even though you can use your wrestling keep your elbows close to your body at all time i know you've heard the t-rex hands and the t-rex arms Mm -hmm. when your elbows get away from you it leaves your arm open to attacks oh (sighs) spoken like a true spoken like a true black belt to a white belt (laughs) (laughs) Uh, oh man okay now look now now look she can't really tell too much other stuff. Y'all got to go down and take the classes. You know, that's what y'all need to do. Go take the classes. If I was in California, I, I, I'd i be in school there every day. Because I, I, like, I just wouldn't want to get no Kimuras. That's all. The other stuff, I kind of saw it coming. But the Kimura, nah, it's just something that's foreign. It's foreign to me, so. That's yeah. crazy. Mondo's a wrestler. He, he actually likes the Kimura as well. But really? he likes it from the bottom game. I know probably giving his... Some of his secrets away he's probably they're like stop talking about my secrets <laughs> yeah. but um he, he really he really attacks the arm the kimura man y'all crazy <laughs> y'all y'all great hey but you know congratulations though for being a professor getting your black belt okay so marin you got a you got a fight coming up against macy chasson okay, okay your thoughts about macy and what does she do what does she do well that you've observed She's a, a long fighter. She does that very well. Um, not putting anything past her. She likes to be, if she's on the ground, she likes to be on top. She's got good good pressure. She does like the clinch. She likes to throw a lot of knees from the clinch, from that area in the open. So there's just a lot of things that she does really well. It's almost like her strategy, you know, for most of her opponents is to put them in the clinch and then put them against the cage. And try to just you know knee and grind on him to death, like really like wear him down. That's that, that's that's usually like a strategy most of the time when she's in space. Um, one fight that I watched her fight, I watched her fight Lena Landsberg, and I saw how Lena Landsberg was able to to turn the tables. Um, you know, do you think that she's gonna try that same tactic with you? Just try to you know get in your personal space and start trying to just maul you to death with of knees. Of course. She's in, I mean, she's got a, obviously I, I, we've gone through every scenario. So every scenario in the book, we've gone through what she's going to do, but it's, we're more focused moving forward on what I'm going to do as a fighter, what I'm going to do in turn, how I'm going to react. So those are a few of the things that in turn that we work on. We don't focus on, okay, what's her going to be her game, game plan? We just can't sit there and do that to ourselves. we got to sit there and be like, what's our game plan? Let's execute it. If it's not working, what's back up? Okay. Now, you know, I know you can't give away too much of your strategy, so I'm not going to even ask the silly question, but I know I saw a couple things. You know, I saw a few things when I was watching some of our past fights, and I'm like, okay, I, I can see where you can take, an advantage, take advantage of this, you know. Or, you know, there are certain situations where I know that, I was sitting there watching, you know, her fight, uh, Sh- Shannon Young and Lena Landsberg, and I'm like, you know, if Mar- if Marion was in those positions, man, you know, that 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 might end the fight, cause you know, I'm like, Marion guard, Marion guard is sick. I mean, it's, it's it's crazy. It's crazy, like what you do from the guard, cause you like to use your guard as an offensive weapon instead of a defensive weapon. Now, can you can you talk more about that? Cause like, how how are you you know able to develop all that? Mm, 
I think it initially stemmed from when I started training. I didn't have any females to train with. So the only way that I can hold a guy still was keep him in my guard, wear him out and then attack. And I learned that early on. Okay, hold him in your guard. If he can't break your legs, your legs are lo- your legs are strong. Hold him in your guard, wear him out. Now start attacking because he's going to start getting tired. He's going to start opening up. Now, that's not a strategy that I use per se now, but initially when I first started training, that's pretty much how I viewed things like, okay, if I can wear him out, I can tap him out. Now, fast forward, you can't be a one-dimensional fighter. You just can't. And I don't like to be considered a one-dimensional fighter because we are in the game of mixed martial arts. So learning to fight not only on top, but on bottom, in bad positions, in good positions is essential. And we train that very, I'd say very intensively um, all the time, whether I have a fight camp coming up or uh, have a fight coming up or I don't have a fight coming up. We train pretty much predominantly everything to be good at everything. Wow. I mean, that's, that's, that that's, you know, it's almost like it's, it's refreshing to kind of hear it. Like, you know, you, we train for this, you know, we're not training for just one thing, you know, we train for everything because, you know, she going to try to bring everything she can to try to stop you. So your goal is to stop her, you know, and that's, uh, that, that's what it is. Well, man, you know, I, I definitely, I, I can't wait because I'm, I'm watching it and I'm just looking at it from a bird's eye view, you know, of just like, you know, how sharp you're getting now, even, you know, your punches and when you're doing mitt work, you know, you're sharper. Um, and you do got to kill a right hand, Mari. That, that right hand is, is, it's pretty powerful. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, do, do, I mean, are we looking for a knockout or something to set it up with that right hand or, you know, like what, what do you, what, what do you feel? I am very, I, I, obviously I love the stand up game. The stand up game actually when i first got into mixed martial arts all i wanted to do was stand up i was like i'm not gonna go on the ground i don't need that ground stuff that was basically what i thought i i love i love that feeling of making contact with something i do like my right hand we have been using it a little bit more Um, i'm not looking per se for something it will come if it's there it'll come and I've been taught by some of the best, don't look for something because then you're going to open yourself up to something. It's going to come. Just be patient. It'll come. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I, I know you got to know this because I know in all your fights when I'm, I'm studying, I'm like, you know what? <laughs> the, the tumbling down of the towers, it starts with that right hand because, you know, I, I watched some of your handiwork against Yana Kuna and Sky, and I'm like, you know, that all started with a right hand, you know, like, like that I was like man you know her face is like it's, it's, it's gone or you know in, in the Betsko hair fight I noticed that everything just kind of started with that right hand and then you know everything just kind of went from there you know oh wait a minute okay sorry they, they, okay these guys I got some questions okay sorry uh, what would your strategy be for Amanda Nunes and Cregan start said hello oh well first off hello hello um Against Amanda Nunes, first off, you can't be at the end of her punches. Amanda Nunes has that overhand right. Everybody knows it's there, but nobody knows how to stop it. So first thing first, working on that overhand right. She likes to set up the calf um, kicks to it. So you either got to go all the way in or stay all the way out. You pick your suck. So is it going to suck to go all the way in or is it going to suck to be all the way out? For most fighters who she's finished, it sucked to be all the way out. So you got to commit. Um, Kazingano probably exposed a little bit of a weakness, I would think, maybe on her back. And, you know, you just got to put her on her back. That's the key. Put her on her back. Okay. Hey, hey, look, you know, that, that's going to cost you $80. I mean, you know, or you need to buy a book. Okay. I mean, you need to buy a book. Okay. So put her on her back. Okay. So. You, you got this fight coming up and you've been, you know, speaking a whole lot of like positive stuff. You know, you just been saying, putting it out there in the universe. You know, what, what do you say to people who say, well, you know what, you know, God, she's past her prime. 
you know, she can't do this, can't do this, and oh, she's this age, and you know, that when they start talking like nonsense like that, what, what do you, how, how, how do you respond to those kind of things? Block them. I don't want to hear your <laughs> shit. Ah! <laughs> 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 got time for that. Mm-mm. You got time for that. She said she gonna block that shit, y'all. That's what she said. Hey. I, I have um. I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinion, and that's great. Mm. But I'm not here to hear that that nonsense. I'm not in, ranked. I'm not where I'm at because I'm oh because I'm 43 years old. You know, obviously I'm still in the game, and I'll know when to say, "Hey, that's enough." I uh, I've met my match. I'll know. I'll know when I start to feel like I can't do it anymore, and I feel that I have developed a great strength and conditioning coach. I've developed these skills over time and I feel like I'm in my best shape ever. I'm the strongest I feel like that I've ever been. And, you know, I'm hoping that I'm going to go display it. You're going to see. And so that negativity outside the realm. And I love that if you go to my Instagram and you look at the people who comment and what they say, it's not negative. I, I don't think I've, I maybe encountered it twice in my fight career, twice negativity. Mm. And that's because I beat one of their favorites. And <laughs> look, you have a, a, you're entitled to your opinion, but I like that they're very respectable. A, I have um, huge on respect, very respectable and that they don't um, demean me in any way as far as, you know, say things that are sexual. I appreciate that in the fans that I have. Yeah, she married. Why would you say that? <laughs> yeah, she married. Her husband can break your arm. She can break your arm. It's it, it just, it's just not, it's not safe. That's why. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a big thing with that too. I've had good experience these past few years with great fans, so I can't complain. I, I don't, I don't see that. Maybe they talk about it in other threads. They can talk as long as I'm in your mouth. I don't care. That's right. As long as they're talking about you. That's that Floyd Mayweather principle. Keep talking about me. Keep talking about me. That's good because, you know what, how can somebody who's 43, you know, really, you know, walk around like she's about 23? And people don't understand the fountain of youth that you that you have. That's what, that's, what, that's what people don't understand. They don't understand. Like, I see you, how well you take care of yourself. You know, you, 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 you're active. You know, you put the right things in your body. And, you know, that's, that's why you can be 43 and look like 23, you know? It is what it is. <laughs> That's my goal. Stay young. Stay young. Okay. All right. Well, it, 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 that, that's good. So, this fight, and we don't want to look past. I don't want you to look past Macy Chasson, but let's let's just go on the events. No, I don't. Look, I don't actually look past any of my opponents. I know she's when, gonna be tough. Gonna be tough. When this fight, when you concluded this fight, because, like I said, I always speak. You know, the positive. I'm one of them people. I, I got. Or oh, I say it like I say it. Who who is your dream fight? Now after this fight with Macy's done, and then you win this fight, who who next would be like your dream fight? Like you just, I got to have this person. I I don't know. I actually haven't thought past her. Mm, okay. Okay. That my my focus when I train, I'm thinking about what I'm gonna do to her. When I train, when I eat everything is i'm not looking past her i i can't even see that right now um ask me afterwards though so that means we got to zoom again yeah ask me afterwards and we'll, we'll touch bases. we're gonna have to zoom again you know got to zoom again because you know also too say i'm gonna uh get some of your fight picks i'm gonna see if i can pick more fights right than you can i don't know right. i'll probably beat you you know i beat everybody so i'm gonna see <laughs> i'm gonna see i have never picked a fight wrong never never in my life Never ever, um, yeah. And everybody here can tell you I've never done that. Okay, so you're doing you're doing a series called, um, and I caught I caught a minute of it, and I'm I was kind of upset because it was only a minute, but it was the grind, and I'm sitting here like, okay, where's the rest of it? Oh, and then I look, it's not coming till March. So I don't know. Could could you tell us a little bit more about like the grind? Like, what are you doing with that when it comes to your fans can see? So MMA Gold, um, we're partnered with them. I, I train with them. Their coaches are my coaches. Um, 
they are doing uh, obviously a series on everybody on the team and ob obviously me being one of them you know they did a segment or a segue about you know my losses they've done a segment about my wins um, how it's how it is to be a teacher a parent you know just different array of things and what it, that meant to me. I thought it was pretty cool. I like how, the concept of how they did it. They caught me raw. I mean, I had just came down for three and a half, four hour drive. They're like, okay, are you ready? And I'm like, let's go. <laughs> Went in there and I did this interview with them and it was pretty raw. Wow. Those are the best kind though, raw. Yeah. Sam, what's on your mind? But you know, you said a lot of inspirational stuff though, you know, in that one minute. And I'm like, man, you know, like you was talking about how your son, you know, was eating like the chicken nuggets and using the gym, just grinding, you know, putting in all his time. And I was like, man, that's that's why she was raised in the gym. He 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 would basically have a little backpack. It's an animal backpack. Anybody can tell you he would have it. It would be full of animals or Legos. You pick and choose. He would spread it all on the floor and he'd have a little war going on. And every time I looked over at him, he'd be pew, 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 pew. He's in his own world. You couldn't tell him nothing. He was, he's very imaginative and that was his world. So I let him do that. He got one hour to himself and I had like one hour, two hours, sometimes three hours in the gym. And he did such a great job at being that. I had to have to bring snacks for him, dinner, and that's where he would eat. He would eat in the gym. That was our life for a very long time wow and so your son watched you grind and you know i think you told me your son like he, he played basketball right yes okay yeah i remember you told me you played basketball and you know now he's 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 on in the college now right he is at a junior college yes down wow. south wow Marion, I mean that, that 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 young man looks just like you i mean he's got he's definitely got a lot of your facial facial features i mean that's sweet Day, but if you saw his daddy oh my god he looks just like his dad <laughs> oh really <laughs> but well, we don't need that. <laughs> okay okay all right all right dad peace salute <laughs> but now you take some of the best photographs of him you know you you also do photography you know um and i look i'm like wow man Mario is multi-talented you know like she can do a lot of stuff but i noticed that the image because it's your son it's like you capture some of the best artistic images of your son and it's just like normal stuff. I'm like, huh? Only Marion Ray No can turn this into art. I'm like, wow, wow. The, the story behind photography was I had a vehicle. It was an Xterra at the time, and it took a ton of gas. And I was pretty much living to feed my son and to put gas in the car to go to work. And I did not have extra cash, if there's such a thing as extra cash. Hmm. So I got a camera. And I started doing photography. I would do sessions, tw an hour session for say $20, $40. That's it. Just enough to get and have gas for a week, you know, and I would do these sessions back to back to back. My son would be with me while I was doing these sessions. I mean, mind you, he was four or five, six years old. He would have to go with me, hold my camera bag, whatever. And that's where it started. Now, fast forward, my favorite subject, obviously, is always my son. It's always capturing him. And I find that as a photographer, it was easy for, obviously, to, for me to connect to him and talk to him. If you had somebody watching behind the scenes of me taking photos of my son, you would be laughing because we talk so much crap to each other <laughs> just to get some of the images that we get. Um, sometimes he's a little butt and I'm like, do you want to eat? then smile you know and <laughs> it's funny it's humorous and then you know he lightens up my my son is comical if he sees that i'm getting frustrated or upset he's the jokester he'll make a joke about it he'll joke with me oh come on now and he'll pet me on the head because <laughs> i'm like boy and then, you know and then he'll give me he's a jokester and i think he got that from me thank god but yeah he, if you if somebody were to watch us do a photography session, they would be like, "Oh my god, <laughs> what, what's going on here? What's going on here?" But that's that's 
that's good but you can see the finished product though i mean you definitely got to go to instagram you can see the finished product i mean and you know it's 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 amazing you know and then you know i even like the photographs when you take you and mondo and it's almost like you're capturing like that perfect moment like it's not the fact that okay y'all husband and wife okay because anybody take those photographs no when you and him take a photograph it's like we're capturing this magical moment you know that's how i feel like when i'm watching you two take uh, photographs magical yes. i i love it and the photographs we don't do very many professional photos together but we we did when my son came down during thanksgiving last year and i tell mondo all the time i love the way you look at me you the way he looks at me especially it's you can tell it in the photos i I cherish that because it, I'm like, you You look like you still love me. He's like, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was going to take a taser for you. Of course. Of course he does. Let's yeah. try this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Nah, we ain't doing no taser. But hey, see, to each his own. To each his own. Okay, uh, you have a new fan now by the name of Decimated 550, okay? He I said, know, I know that, 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 well, that's a hell of a name. <laughs> <laughs> ah, damn. <laughs> he says he says Mario, he says Mario, uh, does your career in, in the school system possibly hold you back from doing all the MMA training you wish to do okay good question very good question no the answer is no what my schooling does is it helps me from not overtrain. I am huge on training all I think about is training what else can I do what else can I do and I have the tendency to overtrain. Um, this is especially true in the summertime or during vacations when I don't have a daytime job. I just like to train. And sometimes I overdo it. I end up injuring myself, whatever the case is. But I feel like having this other career path kind of molds me to, hey, you can't do everything all at once. You have to take time in between to rest. So I, I don't. I don't feel that it has hindered me in any way, shape or form. Regardless, when I was in school, I was still training on my prep period. So I would get like an hour, hour and a half prep. I would go to the track and train it. I found a way to make a way. So if I needed to get in an hour of running, I'd go do it on the track during my prep period time. But then it gave me a chance to recover. I had a couple hours to recover and then go train again because I had to go teach. So um, I don't think so, but good question. Wow, man, that was, that was a good question, Decimated. And he's all excited. He said, ooh, she answered my question. I, I, see, see, and now you know why whenever I interview, I get like, I'm like ultra nervous. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm talking to Maureen again. But <sighs> see, yeah, I mean, we, we, I mean, we all do. It's just, you know, I still, I, I see, I'm like, wow, it's Maureen, a black belt, fighter, oh, no. teacher, you know. Okay, you have a new fan. Well, she's been a fan of yours for a while. Tay Tay Brown says, Greetings, King Coach and beautiful Mari. I salute to the sister in the WMMA Universe, Tay Tay Brown. Zach Mojo says, The Belizean Bruiser, he calls you the Triangle Queen. Wow. Yeah, I told y'all. I've been telling people for three years that you got the best triangle in WMMA. I, I've been saying that. I mean, I'm sorry, the best guard. I've been telling everybody that for the last three years. I said, she got the best guard. I said, y'all can go ahead and take her down and fall into that guard. Whew, that's your death trap. That's your death trap. Cool, that, thing. that death trap is gone, buddy. Uh-uh. Don't fall in that. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Combo want to know, what type of cameras do you use? Oh, okay. I have a Canon 6D. Um, I have a Canon Mark II. And I have a Canon Mark III. Okay. Yeah. So those and are I like... Have every lens. I have pretty much every lens from a... I have 50 millimeter. They're L series. I have 85 millimeter. I have the um, 70 to 200 milliliter, millimeter. I just have pretty much every lens. I'm a lens geek. <laughs> Says your lens, lens geek combo. Okay. I think he takes pictures too. So you might yeah. have to tell it what kind of camera you got, Combo, okay? Exactly. No, what do you shoot with? Yeah. She said, what do you shoot with, Combo? Tell it to her. All right, let's see. Danielle Hamilton. She says, what do you teach? Okay. PE and health. That's fun subjects. She teaches PE and health. 
Well, and you got an F, Danielle, because you didn't know that to begin with. You're supposed to do your research before you come on here and, and, and talk to the bruiser, okay? So, there it is. I'm just playing. Okay, now, <laughs> Zach Mojo. Okay, okay. Man, they got some good comments. Hey, they wanted. They said you were robbed against Evan Smith and Kuniskaya. Okay. Yeah, don't forget Betch Cohea, too. Put Betch Cohea in there, too, okay? Yeah. Put that in there, too. Okay. I agree. I agree with that one. I don't put it out there very much, especially on social media. Hey, I got I to gotta lose with grace, but I definitely agree with that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. You rearrange somebody's face, man. That's, come on. <sighs> you know, but I'm going to tell you, though. I'm going to tell you the problem, and I was going to ask you about this, these judges. Okay, these judges. Um, you know, I think the best, the worst thing that I saw was when a judge wasn't actually paying attention to the fight. And that that's what irritated the hell out of me. Because I was like, okay, so they got these non-athletes. And, I, you know, and people say I'm mean when I call. I'm like, you got these guys. They've never played a sport. They don't know what a treadmill look like. They can't do a push-up. And they're sitting there judging fights. And I'm like, you know, how come we don't have retired fighters or even ex-referees or people like that? that are judging these fights you know why do we have these guys that just don't really care about the sport anyway judging the fight i mean i, I don't know you know like how much can you delve on just judges in the scoring system if you can no i i tend to agree with you there on the issue of putting judges in a sport they don't understand you know, how could you understand that, hey, if I'm on my back and I'm throwing up submissions and all they're doing is defending and nothing else is going on, how can you see, you know, that that person's winning? It's kind of like, but everybody knows, every fighter knows if you're on your back, it's in the judge's eye, you're losing, whether or not you are being offensive. Now, I do believe that they should have former fighters as um, judges, I think it would help in some of the bad judging that goes on. And, um, and, and it's in, in retrospect, it's, that's needed because the fighters put so much into just walking into that cage. So before they even see that there's like weeks of training, weeks of spending money on training weeks for coaches, food facility, whatever the case is just to get one bad call and you don't get your win money, that's a lot. That's everything to a fighter. So I think, you know, investing in um, judges who know the sport is essential. Yeah. I know. I, I saw an amateur about once and I'm going to tell you, you know, people think I'd be over exaggerating when, you know, I said, okay, you know, you got some guy over here, you know, drinking a Coke, eating a, a ham and bacon sandwich over here, but it was a guy literally at the judges table, right? This guy had a sandwich, and I'm talking about Martin. This sandwich is bigger than his head, and I'm like, you know, wait a minute, what, who is this? And you know, a friend of mine was saying, hey, well, that's a judge. What is he doing? He was eating that sandwich, and I'm like, so how can he even pay attention to the fight if he's, you know, having having dinner or lunch or whatever it was? I'm like, man, that's something about the sport that definitely you know need to change, and I think a lot of these decisions will be the correct decisions, you know. And then too, Dana always puts it out there the best way to ensure a win is to make sure it doesn't go in the hands of the judges. But we all know that that's not always a hundred percent a factor or something that we're able to do. You know, sometimes it does have to go to the judges and that's the plan B. The plan B should be a good plan as well for the fighters. Yeah. what well, a plan should be just call the damn fight. Right. How about that? Just call the fight. Right. <laughs> that's what you do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you have a new fan, Zach Mojo. He says, uh, Okay, well, he, want, he he wants to ask you about, can we talk about the Sarah McMahon fight and the victory celebration, the screaming, the stomping, chest pounding, total badass? <laughs> okay, so did you see the first round? <laughs> the first round of that fight, it, it was the worst case scenario, right? She had great pressure. We knew that. And we did not want, that was the worst case scenario. Do not want her in my side control, no matter what, because wrestlers are good at maintaining that pressure from that position. And it happened to be, I got it in the first minute. <laughs> as soon as she took me down, I was like, well, that sucks. In my <laughs> head, I'm like, okay, this is not the position I want to be in. Then I hear her corner and they're saying, 
she doesn't want to be there. And I'm like, no, 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 I want to be here. Like he was saying stuff to her and I was in my head answering back like, that's not true. I do want to be here. I, I'm going to fight out of this. And then I, in my head, I'm like, as soon as I get out of this, I am going to knock you. Un-. Like I was just getting more and more mad, but I wasn't crazy worried because her ground and pound was literally like, Yep. And it it was just annoying. It wasn't to the point where I was like, okay, I got to watch out. I got to be careful. Second round comes and obviously I'm the underdog. And I was like, that's not happening again. I promise you. And one of my coaches was like, your right hand will be there. It'll be there. And I could hear him in the background saying, okay, okay. You're right. It's right there. I know you see it. And he was very calm. And just like that, it set the tone. We knew she was going to do an ugly shot and we had practiced single leg shot to a triangle. We had practiced that single leg to a triangle, single leg to a triangle. And when it happened, I was like, whoa, you know, like that at first you're like, whoa, it happened. And then let's finish it. And it was just everything that you overcome, the emotions, they were just, I usually don't celebrate like that, but that was just raw, like, that was the most raw you'll probably see me after a fight. Man, I loved it. Ah, ah, boy, I was like, yeah, baby. Yeah, make it do what it do. I, I was like, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I seen it. But, you know, you know, it, it just it just go to show you, you know. The guard. The guard. <laughs> the guard. It's just that's God gave you the ability to throw people in that guard and you know you probably only fight or two because I, I cringe sometimes oh they pulling guard no when you do it I'm like yep there we go there we go somebody else is gonna fall victim to that thing yeah and you know body snatcher was talking about your right hand you know I, you got a lead pipe in that right hand I'm serious because um, when you land it like when you really land it you know those girls are rattled see they a lot of them they got a great poker face but you know the legs don't lie the legs don't lie I've seen enough people take shots. I've taken a couple. The legs don't lie. That right hand is just is money. You know, were you, I don't know, when, when did you discover that, okay, this is my money punch right here? Bah. Kindergarten. <laughs> kindergarten. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. You was beating people up in kindergarten. Come on now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, my dad, from the very beginning, um, first he would tell me you have big hands. So I have really big hands. He's like, them fighting hands. I'm like, okay. You know, so every year I got in fights at school. Kindergarten, first grade, second grade, all the way up the grade. (laughs) Probably kindergarten with Marky. (laughs) Oh, man, Marky. You still remember his name. Dang. (laughs) My apple. It's it's a story. I can't let it go, but he took my apple. I remember it. (laughs) You see Marky now, he probably going to have your bag of apples because, you know, he he was scared of you. Damn, he was scared. Yeah, poor. <laughs> okay, we're gonna wind it down to a couple more questions, y'all. Okay, and I, I kind of like the live stream because people can actually ask you questions what they were thinking, you know. So it's kind of cool. Um, George Page, he says, since the coronavirus, do you miss going out and having fun? Mm, I, I yes, absolutely. What I miss most, and I didn't think I would, would be in person teaching. I just really dislike Zoom. I don't, I like to build rapports with my students, lifelong rapports, not rapports, not just, hey, you're in my class, we're going to build a rapport. No, I want to build a lifelong rapport with you. I want to see you succeed later on in life. So when I see you out in public, um, I think I miss that the most. I, um, I hate how everybody freaks out if you don't have a mask on or if you're too close to them. That it's more so what other other people's reactions are you you see it all the time on video you see their reactions how they're going off on random people and i just you you worry about that because you never know who's carrying a gun who's going to snap you know it's just i'm more concerned with how other people are going to react and how scared they are i mean look at the toilet paper crap they were scared and toilet paper went missing for um, shelves. And so um, on, with all seriousness, of course, I wish there would, I hope that we get to some back to some normalcy mm-hmm. to where people can relax a little bit more. 
but more than anything, I hope that we can get back to in-person teaching. Yeah, I, 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 I second that, you know, because you and I, we, we definitely, we work with kids. We, I, I know I do. And my at-risk kids, uh, no, they couldn't stay home for months because we know what's going to happen with them. I, I know exactly where they're going, you know, so, nah. So, you know, I went against our city, pub, our city ordinance, you know, they said shut everything down. But I had to, like, secretly, you know, keep my gym open. You know, I had to do that. Um, so those at-risk kids can have their four, three to four hours a day in there so I can kind of wear them out so they don't want to go out and get in trouble, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, and I miss it. I miss it. They need it. They need it. They need that interaction. And who's to say five, 10 years, 20 years from now, what did, what damage did we do to our kids, holding them back, holding them at home, forcing kindergartners and first graders and second graders to do online training. You know, when every kid looks forward to their first day of school in school. So it's, you know, especially as a younger um, and the strain that's probably put on some of the families, I couldn't imagine having a toddler right now and having to be at home and have them focus on a Zoom. I mean, I'm on it and I'm like, oh my God, my eyes and oh, I'm tired. Okay. I come more tired being on Zoom. And I tell my students all the time, I've never sat still for this long in my life, you know, besides if I'm sleeping. So it's just kind of a... Yeah, because I'm used to walking around the room, you know, and, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm not because I, I, I exercise a lot anyway. So me sitting down, you know, and look, we on the Zoom again today and we, we you and I probably been on Zoom all day long, you know, with, with you know, young people. And now I'm like, I never thought, dang, we on a Zoom. <laughs> me and Margaret on the Zoom. I said, damn, what the, you know, uh, man. but yeah, I, I see you coming from the kids. Hopefully we do get back to some kind of normalcy where they can come back to school and, you know, we can get those rapports because it is harder building those rapports over zoom i i i found it you know and getting them to trust you too over zoom is a little bit harder you know oh it's crazy hard it's crazy hard um actually i i did get permission from my admit admin that after my fight when i have a little bit more time um on the weekend i'm gonna head down to the track the kids are allowed to come from their parents' permission, they're going to get to, you know, do some workouts on the track with me. So that way they can, first, I can meet them. Second, we can interact and we can get them moving again. I can't tell you how many kids are looking forward to this. When, when do we start? What time? What, when are we going to be like, I love that enthusiasm. They want to work out now. They want to be um, outside, you know, doing something. So that's something that I look forward to. Man, golly, I can't, I can't wait. Hopefully you take plenty of videos so we can see it, you know, so we we can see all these people getting excited because I, I would get excited. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Miss Ray, no, yeah. I mean, Miss uh, Miss Ray, no <laughs> prayers. Uh, you got track workouts. Oh, let's go. Let's go. I'm gone. I'm gone. <laughs> I'm gone. So, okay. I'm going to ask you the last couple of questions, y'all. And, and we got to go. Uh, I'm not trying to rush y'all, but I'm trying to respect because I know you're a family woman. You got stuff going on. Okay. In this training camp, who? I'm going to move location. Because, hold on one second because my internet says it's unstable, so I don't want it to go out on you. That's okay. You, hey, okay. you stable That's right okay. now. Who in this training camp has been giving you the most work? I'm talking about they've been tearing you up. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. Everybody. There's no mercy. <laughs> I, I don't. You're not playing patty cake. There's no time to play. They better be making me work. I have pretty much everybody pushing me, um, keeping me humble, helping me to stay on my grind, stay focused. Just one track mind. That's it. I, I want it more. Uh, it's wow. just a one track mind, plain and simple. Now, for everybody that never knew, what is Mondo's role in training camp? Poor Mondo. Oh, no. <laughs> so he's. He's my head coach. Mm. He pretty much, you know, what days I train, what. Um, he also, my wrestling coach, my jujitsu. He's also my training partner. So he's one person besides a couple of other people um, that I train with. But he's definitely one person where everything goes and it doesn't matter. I, uh, we roll hard. My punches are harder. <laughs> my kicks are a little bit harder. And I know he's not going to get <laughs> come back and try to kill me. 
Every once in a while, he does, and uh, I probably deserve it. But uh, oh, wait a minute. He, he pushes me a little bit more. He does my road work with me. He's like my partner, my training partner. He's my coach, motivational coach. So he's he's pretty much he does a little bit of everything. Oh wow, Mondo uh, in the super chat, ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cent from Bad Boy Perez. That's your bad boy. That's 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 your bad boy. He he yeah. just yeah. And, and y'all know what we do with the stuff around here. You know, we give it to fighters who you know. Of course, you know, starting a yeah, fighting career is pretty tough. You know, some fighters need stuff, normal basic things, you know, like groceries, toiletries. So, you know, we take all the money made off YouTube and we give that to fighters. So, that's what we do. So, yes. That's fantastic. Yeah. He's generous that way. I, I wouldn't ex expect less. Honestly, he, I think he said he wanted to give more at one time, but it's, it only allows a certain amount. Hey, tell him, tell him, look, the fighter that received that, you know, they're going to be like... <gasps> You know, and it, it's it's kind of weird. Like when you know when, the, when fighters get this like magical cash app. Hey, what's your cash app? They be like, oh, it's uh okay. And then next thing you know, they get a, a cash app award. They be like, what? You know, but they, it, it's that's that's the part I like. You know, watching them like, <laughs> you know, just be excited. I I enjoy that. I enjoy it. But but Mari, here's what I want to do this time. Cause normally I say, hey, could you you know say Coach Sheldon Harrison? No, 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 no. I got something different. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. And you got to be able to do this live, okay? Okay, I'm going to put, uh -oh. I'm going to put, <laughs> she said, oh, no. She don't even know what it is yet. She said, oh, no. I'm going to put <laughs> the Trifecta MMA logo on the screen. And y'all, y'all can see it right now. There it is, okay? You got to do a commercial right now for Trifecta MMA, and it's got to be good. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, damn. No, you didn't. Got off guard. Um, <laughs> all right, here it goes. What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for somebody in Walmart to take you down, grab your cash? Are you waiting for the bully in school to beat your butt? You let me know when you're ready to get some training in to defend yourself, not only yourself, but your family. Head over to Trifecta MMA where we will change the game. Did I do it? I don't, I can't hear you, Coach. <laughs> Are you on mute? I'm sorry. I put myself on mute for this. I had to shut up. Man, <laughs> that's number one. What a boy. That's number one. I want to go right now. I want to go to Trifecta, Trifecta MMA right now. I was excited when you first. And I'm excited now. Man, did y'all hear that interview? I, I tell you what. Any of y'all listening to this? You in the California area? Okay. As a matter of fact, um, what, what's the exact address in California? Y'all need to go to classes now today. <laughs> we are at we're on Main Street, 1933 East Main. Actually, that is actually a, a good address. I have a lot of people ask, you know, can I do an autograph for them? That is the perfect address to send your self-addressed envelope and a picture that you want me to autograph, and I will autograph it for you. So, yeah, if y'all come out of gym now, come on, let's let's look to let's spend some money at the gym. Let's get signed up, and let's go ahead and get in these classes because, you know, look. This, you know, this this is a professor, y'all. Y'all got a professor right here of Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and she's a black belt. Y'all don't join now. I don't know what to say. Y'all y'all crazy. You in California, you stupid if you don't go over there. Nah, it's just me. I'd be over there. I'd be over there in a minute. She probably wouldn't laugh at me. One, one of these days, you're going to have to travel down to California. Oh, okay. You're going to have to come say hi. You're going to have to do a few classes with everybody and meet everybody. Um, and see the for yourself exactly how it is um and then you know come online we'll talk about it a little bit but definitely you got it you got to come down heck yeah you boy <laughs> you you tell it that you, you ain't saying that but a word coach right. Shelton has to be there we'll be ready to roll i'll be ready to roll you know put it out there guys he said he's gonna do it so hold him to it yeah hold me to it that's okay hey i just won't be getting in no kimuras that's all no kimuras <laughs> Well, Mari, I really appreciate it. Golly, I said we were going to talk for a short time, and man, sorry, I apologize for that. We just got to talking. Crap. It was good. It was a good conversation. I appreciate it. It's very lighthearted. I like coming on here. 
I, I don't typically do a lot of interviews. Um, I, just for whatever reason, I'm usually really, really busy, but I was like, no, I have to, I have to make time. And it was a hundred percent worth it. Thank you so much for having me. I promise when we do the post interview, it's going to be 10 times shorter. <laughs> Don't worry about that, coach. You don't have okay. to worry about it. All right. Perfect. Well, y'all, Marion was here with us. She's leaving us. But, guys, go check her out. Follow her on Instagram. Everything's up on the screen. If you can't read, I'll put a link in the description for you. Uh, yeah, there it is. February 6th. Uh, Feb- God, now I'm messing up my promo. February 6th, 2021, Marion Reno versus Macy Chasson live. Check it out. Go buy it. All right, and with that, peace and salute to everybody in the WMA universe. Salute to Marin, salute to Mondo Perez. Thank you to all the Super Chat people.